What's up guys, how's it going? Uh, I know it's I have a little bit of an irregular schedule making videos, but I'm gonna try and pump one out once a week just because I know that some of you guys are impatient and there's a lot of the stuff that I have to make videos of. I have an entire whiteboard full of stuff that I ain't gotta make videos about. But for today, I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a MOSFET install video and quite frankly, um, I don't solder quickly enough. I'm not that great at, sw at soldering to be able to make a a video as I'm doing it um, and I don't really have the time like when I, I solder I solder a whole bunch of things at once because I have to take all my stuff out to the garage and do it because um, of the fumes and junk but I'm going to show you how it's wired up in this specific gearbox that I've got right now because I just so happen to have this gearbox which is really easy to demonstrate um, some of the internal workings of the um, of the wiring and whatnot so uh, and this is going to be a tutorial for MOSFETs so the what does a MOSFET do? A MOSFET is a um, it's like a it's like a gate in the simplest of terms that I it opens and closes um, when there's current being passed through it. I'm sure there will be someone else out there with a better explanation than that, but that's the best grasp that I have personally on it. Um, so it's these little units right here. This particular one's a hamster fed. I've done a review on it in the past. Um, it has a thermally resetting poly fuse attached to it, and um, what that does is that you're bypassing the trigger contacts right here. Now, usually the trigger contacts, the power goes straight from the battery through these wires right here, through the trigger contacts to the motor. This is what completes the circuit and sends the energy to the motor. Um, when TM originally designed the system, it was meant to be run with a very relatively low amperage on it. It was like, you know, these 7.4 volt or 8.4 volt, um, or no, 7.2 or 8.4 volt um, nickel metal or NICAD batteries that were, you know, for the time, all they needed, but since then we've we've gotten into the complex upgrading and tinkering with guns, so we're using these 11.1 LiPos with much massively higher discharge rates and uh, amounts of power being sent through the through the trigger contact. So the problem that you'll find, especially in high stress and high draw setups, is that um, the contacts right here, when these two make a connection, um, they'll start to arc. You'll if you if you can observe the phenomenon. It's it's like a spark that jumps from one side of the contacts to the other as they're making the, the connection right here. And what that can do over time is that it can create heat and carbon buildup and it will eventually char and burn out your trigger contacts. Um, this is actually very common on guns like KWA, even though they're rated for their LiPo ready. Um, their trigger contacts are relatively thin, so they burn out a little bit quicker than others, even on you know stock, stock configurations and whatnot. I, they still last... A okay amount of time, but contrary to popular belief, they they burn out. And I've seen it happen where the trigger contacts burn out because of the the lithium polymer batteries that people and the voltages that people send through the through the trigger contacts. So the MOSFET, what that does is that instead of this being the um, the main, um, I guess you could say, conduit of energy, um, this is now just a signal. So the energy is being passed. When it, when it opens from the battery straight to the motor. These wires um, send the energy straight to the motor and it doesn't get a chance to, send, to get sent through here. What the trigger contacts do instead is that they act as a signal to either open or close that gate for power. Um, and it's, that's done by using this thing called a gate wire right here, this thinner purple wire that's coming out of it. It's usually about a, like 20 or 22. I don't know if it's 22 gauge. I think it's like 20 gauge. I can't read what's on here, but it's a it's a thinner wire because it's just acting as the signal wire. Um, this will vary from for different MOSFETs, for but for this per for the purpose of this video, because most of the MOSFETs that require self installation um, are on a one gate wire setup. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so the hamster fet comes configured like this, and so on one side of the MOSFET, you'll see that there are two. There are two wires, a positive and a negative wire. Those head straight out to your battery. That's simple enough. You just solder on Dean's connectors, Tamiya connectors, um, whatever is going to hook up to your battery. However, where it gets tricky is actually soldering it to the trigger contacts themselves. Um, one of these wires goes straight, and it's going to be the negative wire on the MOSFET in this particular instance. So the negative wire on the MOSFET heading to the side that has three wires gets sent down and straight to the motor. That's going to be one of the one of the wires right there. The other positive wire, so the other wire that comes pre-wired into the MOSFET, that positive wire heads into the trigger contacts and 
the, there's another wire that gets soldered on top of that which is the positive wire that goes to the motor. So you have two wires soldered onto the bottom right here. It's going to be the negative, um, wait no, the, I'm sorry, the positive, the positive wire um, to the trigger contacts coming from the MOSFET and the positive wire coming from the motor to the contacts are both going to be soldered on that um, one contact down here and then the gate wire is going to be soldered to the top one. Um, this is usually how I configure the MOSFETs, but I think there are a couple other ways as far as you can place these two as long as they're on the same contact at the top. You can place this one down at the bottom. Um, previously, I had made a other video that I messed up on and I had soldered um, the positive wire or the negative wire onto the wire with the gate, gate wire on here, and that doesn't work because it's just acting like a normal trigger contact with amperage still being sent through the trigger contacts themselves. So... I deleted that video and that's why that video went down. I made an apology video after that so nobody get on my case for that. Um, someone kindly enough pointed that out and I um, amended that video. So this is the amendment for that video. So otherwise um, I don't think there's a whole lot of other ways to or a whole lot of other things I need to explain about wiring MOSFETs. Um, again for the for the single gate wire setups it's usually two wires are soldered onto that bottom contact and the gate wire is soldered to the top one. Um, However, do consult the manuals or instructions that come with your individual MOSFETs because it will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. There are also dual gate wire setups. Um, I believe AWS, when they were still around, had a setup that I still have in my gun um, with, a, with two gate wires and then the, the other wires heading from the MOSFET go straight to the motor. Um, but that one's a little bit different. Um, but that's a little bit more rare. I think right now the only company off the top of my head that uses a system like that is, um, is Gate, um, a European company that, um, has MOSFETs that have a data cable with, um, two gate, gate wires that solder onto these two. But again, it'll vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, I think I've covered everything that I want to cover in this video. Again, if you have any questions, just let me know at Valley River Arms on Facebook. You can, you know, like me and follow me over there and send me PMs or through my YouTube channel. Um, just let me know if you guys have any other questions or if there's anything else you guys want me to cover. Um, other than that, have a great day, guys, and I'll talk to you later.